makes a 3D printer professional? Is speed all it takes to earn a pro tag? Artillery seems to think so. Hey guys, CJ here from Elevated Systems, and today we're looking at the Artillery Sidewinder X4 Pro. Before we jump into the review, let's get back to that question I opened up on and address what qualifies a 3D printer as pro. To me, the distinction between a hobbyist and a professional machine lies in its ability to produce fast, accurate, and detailed prints without the need for constant adjustments or even a deep understanding of its mechanics. Hobbyist machines offer the fun of mastering the hardware through tinkering, experimentation, and learning to optimize performance. On the other hand, a professional machine focuses on efficiency, delivering top quality results right out of the box with minimal setup or learning curve. If you enjoy the process of tweaking and personalizing your printer, a hobbyist model might be right for you. But if your priority is to achieve the best possible output with little fuss, then a professional printer is what you need. So how does the SWX4 Pro measure up? Let's find out. The X4 Pro started off good. The assembly was simple and straightforward. Four bolts to attach the gantry, a few cables to connect, a couple of diagonal tie rods for some added rigidity, install the control pad and spool holder, and the entire process took about 15 minutes, aided by a pretty good set of instructions. With the printer assembled, let's dive into some of its standout features. At the top, there's a pretty standard spool holder equipped with a filament runout sensor. Just beneath the top rail, you'll find an LED light strip to illuminate the print bed, ensuring you can keep an eye on your project at any hour. The machine boasts an all-metal dual-gear direct-drive extruder and an all-metal hot end that can reach temperatures of up to 300 degrees Celsius. The print head moves smoothly along the x-axis on a ball-bearing carriage slide that's built on a linear rail structure. For vertical movement, the z-axis is controlled by dual stepper motors which use belt-synchronized screw rods, while the gantry operates on standard V-rollers. The build platform features a double-sided PEI magnetic spring steel build plate situated on a hotbed that can heat up to 110 degrees Celsius. This bed also moves along the y-axis using the same linear rail system, providing a total build volume of 240 by 240 by 260 millimeters. Control is handled via a 4.3-inch color touchscreen. The printer operates quietly thanks to a clipper motherboard paired with a 64-bit quad-core ARM CPU. The clipper firmware is designed for efficiency, featuring input shaping and pressure advance that enables incredibly fast print speeds, up to 300 millimeters per second for filament printing, and up to 500 millimeters per second for travel, with accelerations reaching up to 12,000 millimeters per second squared. We'll explore these speeds shortly, but other noteworthy features include an 81-point auto leveling, resume print functionality, filament runout detection, built-in Wi-Fi, seven gigabytes of internal storage, as well as both USB-A and USB-C inputs. The printer was fairly easy to assemble and on paper, the specs and features looked promising. However, I hit the first snag during the setup process with a manual leveling requirement. For a pro printer equipped with mesh auto leveling, the inclusion of a floating bed that needs manual leveling feels like an unnecessary and outdated step. Considering the speeds and vibration this bed endures, which can impact that leveling, this printer should definitely feature a fixed bed. Despite this hiccup, the system startup process is quite streamlined. You manually level the bed, set your Z offset, engage the auto leveling, load your filament, and you're ready to print. To ensure everything was set up correctly, I ran the pre-sliced Benchy model from the included flash drive. The printer began laying down filament smoothly and quickly finishing the benchy in just 40 minutes without any significant issues. 
With the machine up and running, it's time to test it with some custom prints. To bring all the features of this machine to life and actually print a model, you need a separate software application known as a slicer. This software takes your 3D model file, slices it into layers, and generates a code that the printer can interpret to construct the physical model layer by layer. Most Clipper compatible slicing apps will work, but Artillery provide its own version, which is nothing but a rebranded Prusa slicer. I won't dive into the ethics of properly using open source software here, but feel free to start that debate in the comments. The good news is that Artillery's Prusa slicer includes pre-built machine profiles for the X4 Pro, making setup a bit smoother. The first model I tested was the all-in-one 3D printer test. By the way, all models mentioned in this video are linked in the description below. I loaded the printer with a spool of Chidi PLA Rapido for high-speed printing and selected the high-speed PLA profile. This default setting allows for perimeter speeds up to 120 millimeters per second, infield speeds of 300 millimeters per second, and travel speeds of 500 millimeters per second. Pretty quick for a bed slinger. I sliced the model using these default settings, and though I could load the G code into the included flash drive and run the print from the printer, the flash drive provided is, well, crap. Plus, since the printer runs Clipper, has Wi-Fi, and includes internal storage, I opted to connect my printer to my network. It provides its assigned IP address by entering this IP followed by a four slash and pound sign into a web browser on a computer connected to the same network, I gained access to Moonraker or the Clipper interface. From here, I can go to jobs, add a job to the printer and directly upload the model to the printer and begin printing. In the dashboard, I can monitor various printer stats like print speed, fan speeds, and temperatures. I can also adjust Z height, flow rate, speeds, pressure advance, and more. One limitation, however, is that I can't monitor my print job remotely. The X4 Pro doesn't include a camera, which isn't a big deal, but surprisingly, you're not able to add a camera despite the presence of two USB ports. I tried a couple of different USB webcams, and not only did the printer fail to recognize or power the cameras, but it also disconnected from Wi-Fi when I plugged the cameras in and was unable to reconnect to the network while the camera was connected. The test print completed in two hours and 44 minutes, and while it wasn't perfect, nothing major failed. The overhang stayed sharp up to 45 degrees, all the bridging tests up to 25 millimeters were successful. Dimensional accuracy was also impressive, coming within 0.1 millimeters across all axes, which is excellent for a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. The issue I encountered was wobble, interestingly, present only on the X axis. You can see it in the front text and front edge of the print, as well on the X axis dimensional towers and diameter tests. The Y axis, on the other hand, showed no issues. My initial thought to fix this was to run the input shaping calibration, but I quickly realized that the accelerometer sensor needed for this isn't included with the printer. With that option off the table, I started looking for alternatives and discovered that the X-axis belt was a bit loose. Now, I had checked all the belts and rollers during assembly, and they were fine. However, during the first two prints, the belt loosened up enough to affect print quality. While tightening the belt is a simple fix, having self-adjusting belts would be more fitting feature for a pro machine. To double check if the loose belt was indeed the problem, I printed a ringing tower and it completed with absolutely no ring at all. So it looks like the factory calibration is effective but for how long? Not having the ability to recalibrate the machine is a concern. Over time, as the printer is used, parts start to age, ball bearings wear out, belts break down, and rollers degrade. Not enough to require immediate replacement, but enough that it can affect the resonance of the printer. Vibrations will increase or change, requiring recalibration to maintain high print quality. Now, 
I review quite a few 3D printers, and let's face it, accumulating a bunch of unnecessary prints can get pretty wasteful. There's no need to add so much plastic to the waste stream. So for my reviews, apart from test or calibration prints, I focus on printing functional parts or components for projects I'm working on or items that will actually be useful. Luckily, I needed a couple of spool holders for different filaments, so I found a design that suited my needs and sliced it using the default settings and sent it to the printer. Despite using a wide brim for stability, the tall spool rod, which I positioned vertically in the center of the build plate, broke free from the PEI plate due to the high speeds at which the bed moves. Fortunately, the larger base had already completed because regrettably, the printer lacks a component cancellation function that would allow continuing with the rest of the print while discarding the failed part. For the next attempt, I oriented the spool horizontally, but this time the failure was catastrophic. The print not only detached from the bed, but also stuck to the nozzle causing the molten PLA to ooze back up between the hot end and the silicone cover, effectively encasing the entire hot end and nozzle in plastic. It was a freak failure, but I did manage to clean all of the plastic off by heating the hot end and scraping it off. However, the underlying issue was that the printer had apparently forgotten the Z offset. While I initially set up the printer, I adjusted the Z offset which worked out to about 0.44 millimeters. After the failure, I noticed the first layer was very rounded, not as flat as it should be. Checking the Z offset, it had reset to zero. Not ideal, as resetting the Z offset between every print is a real hassle. Luckily, the same week this failure occurred, Artillery released a new firmware update for the X4 Pro, which addressed this apparent problem. With the new firmware installed and the Z offset reset, I reprinted the spool holder and this time it finished flawlessly. Finally, to check the level of detail the printer is capable of, I pulled up this Deadpool bust, which I've been saving for a special occasion. I sliced it again using the default artillery standard PLA settings, but I increased the Z lift height a bit. I noticed a bit of nozzle contact with the infill while traveling on my last prints and some minor layer shifting in most of the other prints. I'm printing the bust using some generic Sun Lu Red PLA, and the printing went pretty smoothly. The print stayed securely fashioned to the build plate. I didn't hear any nozzle contact during the print, and it finished in just over eight hours. The detail was really good, especially for a 0.2 millimeter layer height. However, this model experienced the most and worst layer shifts so far. The belts are tight, I check before each print, the magnetic bed is rock solid so the PEI plate isn't slipping at all, and there's no model impact from the print head. The table the printer is on is bolted to the wall so there's zero wiggle there. So all that's left to consider is speed, and since the printer's number one feature is ability to print fast, if excessive speed is the problem, well, then we indeed have a problem. Now, listen, I could probably, with some time, patience, and more test prints, figure out exactly what's causing the layer shifts in the models and correct it, but this just helps to answer my initial question. Is this really a pro printer? Ultimately, I don't think it is. Over just a few days and a handful of prints, I had to troubleshoot and correct multiple issues. That's okay for me since I've been doing this for a while, but if you're looking to just print things without having to tinker with the printer, then this isn't the one. However, I'm not gonna be too harsh on artillery for using the Pro Tag because while it might not include all the features that I expect from a Pro Printer, it also doesn't come with a Pro price tag. The MSRP on the SWX4 Pro is $319 US, but it's been on sale for just $249 since its launch, which is really good price for what you're getting. All right. Let's wrap this up. Throughout our exploration of the Artillery Sidewinder X4 Pro, we've seen a mix of highs and lows. On the upside, the printer offers some solid features like fast printing speeds, built-in touchscreen, Wi-Fi connectivity, all at a very competitive price. However, it hasn't been smooth sailing. We've encountered issues like manual bed leveling, layer shifts, a memory lapse with the Z offset, and belts that need some hands-on attention. 
artillery still has some wrinkles to iron out to truly label this model as pro but here's the thing for tinkerers and tech enthusiasts out there who love diving into the mechanics and software of their gadgets the SWX4 Pro offers a great low cost way to get into the world of advanced 3D printing. It's a playground for learning and with enhancing your skills with the Clipper firmware, you can really dig into the machine code, see what makes it tick and learn to adjust as needed. If you're not shy about rolling up your sleeves and you're looking for a budget friendly printer that lets you tinker to your parts content, then the SWX4 Pro might just be your match maybe that's what they meant by pro it's for the pro tinkerers for everyone else looking for an out of the box perfect printing experience you might want to keep looking thanks for tuning in guys if you like this review give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more tech reviews and tutorials have thoughts or experiences with the swx4 pro drop your comments below i love hearing from you until next time keep printing and keep tinkering